Thank you, General Hugo. Uh, thank you, Charles Pink and the OSS Society and other distinguished guests. Uh, it's quite an honor to be here again uh, talking to you all. And I want to offer my congratulations and gratitude to this year's Donovan Award winner, Dr. Dr. Michael Vickers. I hope I didn't just give it away. I, I don't want to pull a Steve Harvey or anything. So um, ordinarily, I'm, I'm asked to give the so-called Hemingway Martini Toast. And you might ask, what's the Hemingway Martini Toast? See, as the summer of 1944 advanced, you had the uh, Allied forces advancing upon Paris out of the beachheads of Normandy. And Ernest Hemingway was a uh, war correspondent attached to an OSS unit. He all, was also sort of in charge of a band of French resistance fighters. Now, you're not really supposed to be doing that when you're a war correspondent, but uh, they, they required leadership, and he decided he was the guy to give it to him. Um, the, uh, the, the members of the French resistance knew nothing about his literary qualifications, his novels, short stories. They, they respected his military leadership, and they called him Mon Capitaine. And they always asked him, why aren't you a general or at least a colonel? He said, because I never learned to read or write. <laughs> he was actually brought up on charges by the Army Office of Inspector General, but somehow he beat the rap. So. Um, but on August 25th, 1944, uh, Hemingway and his band of brothers, members of the OSS and the French Resistance, they were among the first Americans to enter, or Allied forces to enter into Paris. And it was Hemingway's goal to get to the Paris Ritz. He wanted to liberate the Paris Ritz. Actually, he wanted to liberate their wine cellar, but that's another matter. Um, but uh, on their way, they had to dispatch a few German snipers, and they paid a visit to Pablo Picasso, his old friend from his days living in Paris. And Picasso wasn't home. And, um, so the house lady said, would you like to leave a gift for Mr. Pica for Mr. Picasso? And Hemingway said, that's a great idea. And he left him a case of hand grenades. <laughs> and he signed it from Hemingway. So how many war correspondents not only carry a carbine, but have a case of hand grenades to give to Pablo Picasso? But um, so on that day, August 25th, 1944, they finally arrived at the Ritz Hotel. Hemingway, the OSS, and the French Resistance and they came walking into, or actually trooping into the, the lobby, and the manager greeted them with a bow and said, ah, Monsieur Hemingway, what can we bring for you? He said, we would like 50 martini cocktails, please. So the, uh, Hemingway was now in charge of the Ritz Hotel. Hemingway always loved martinis. He loved them very dry. He liked a 15 to 1 ratio, 15 parts gin to one part vermouth. He called it the Montgomery, named after Bernard Field, Mar Field Marshal Bernard M Law Montgomery. And he said the Montgomery, or Monty, needed a 15 to 1 troop advantage before he went into battle. <laughs> so ordinarily, I would, I would tell that story and make myself a, a Hemingway martini. But aren't you glad you don't have to suffer through that? Um, also, Hemingway's son, Jack, was uh, a member of the OSS, and he parachuted into uh, Paris, occupied, sorry, occupied France behind enemy lines. And um, an avid fisherman like his father, Jack Hemingway, actually brought along a fly rod with him. And um, a British officer, as they were getting on board the C-57, uh, C-47, said to him, you can't take a fly rod into France on this mission. And he said, oh, it's not, a, it's not really a fly rod. It's, it's, it's a radio antenna. And, the, and the, the British officer said, ah, I say, that's clever. <laughs> but, but tonight is different. We're not doing the martini. We're going to do a drink that I created to, to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the founding of the OSS. And I, was, I drew upon a lot of different inspirations. You have the, the Ritz Hotel. You have the, um, the French 75. You have the, um, uh, uh, the Jack Hemingway story. Um, and of course, the martini. But there's one piece missing. Um, see, at the beginning of World War II, the U.S. didn't have a, a central intelligence operation. We had the FBI, and, and we had two oceans, and we weren't worried about having to have a spy organization. But uh, the British were very interested in having us have a, a, a central intelligence uh, body that could work with their MI6 and British Naval Intelligence. So they sent Admiral John Godfrey and a young assistant named Ian Fleming, I don't know if you recognize that name, <laughs> over to the United States, and Ian Fleming put together a blueprint. He wrote the blueprint for the OSS. And he, he really hit it off with Bill Donovan and uh, gave uh, uh, Ian Fleming a 38 caliber pistol, engraving it with four special services. So um, Ian Fleming had his fingerprints on the original OSS. 
And about 10 years later, um, you have Ian Fleming down in Jamaica writing his first novel. You might have heard of it. It's called Casino Royale. And in that, in that novel, he, um, James Bond creates a drink called the Vesper. Now, the Vesper is made with, um, it's a martini made with gin and vodka and a product called Lillet Blanc or Kina Lillet. So in this drink tonight, I'm using Forge Gin, which is this one here. So it's three parts Forge Gin. Now I'm using Aylesbury Duck Vodka. Ian Fleming and James Bond always specified Russian vodka, but I think we've had enough of Russian interference. <laughs> I'm not going to let them hack my cocktail, thank you. <laughs> Very precise, as you can see. So that is the Vesper. Somewhere around here is a lemon peel. James Bond had to have a big piece of lemon. Now, you might wonder, where are we going from here? Well, the, another inspiration was of the, one of the signature cocktails at the Paris Ritz, known as the, um, the, the champagne cocktail. The champagne cocktail is a glass of champagne with a sugar cube infused with Angostura bitters. Now, in front of you, um, you have sugar, there should be a sugar bowl on every table. I want each of you to take the sugar cube. Don't drop, don't do anything with it yet. You have your glass of champagne and you have your sugar cube. Now, um, we're gonna pretend like that sugar bowl is a, a C-47 Dakota and it's loaded up with paratroopers or special operations um, agents and actually, Speaking of which, we're, we're honored tonight to be joined by John Billings, who dropped Fred Mayer, the real inglorious bastard, into Austria. All right, so, yes. So these sugar cubes have been infused with Vesper cocktails. So what you're doing is you're dropping a Vesper, in free, it's been impregnated with just a little bit of Vesper, and if you're a sugar cube, you can be just a little impregnated. Let me, let me. <laughs> So if everyone has their sugar cube and everyone has their glass of champagne, I'm going to finish my shaking my shaken, not stirred Vesper here. So let me know when everybody has the uh, sugar cube in hand. And when I give the special signal of Geronimo, we're going to drop it into the glass. All right, everybody ready? Okay, we're over the target, Geronimo! So ladies and gentlemen, I give to you the OSS 75. Cheers to a brilliant 75 years of, of American intelligence and special operations. And I'll conclude with my, one of my favorite Hemingway quotes. Always do sober what you said you'd do drunk, that'll teach you to keep your mouth shut. <laughs>